Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here and welcome to a day in my life. Vegan Prepper. Today I'm making kind of a quick grab and go breakfast. We're just gonna do pancakes. I have the um my pancake mix on the channel in the vegan home cooking section. So that's basically what I'm doing this morning. I'm doing pancakes. You normally don't think of pancakes as a quick grab and go breakfast, but when you have a mix ready to go, it's super easy. Um, and then I like to throw extra oats in like while I'm, you know, as I'm about to make them for some extra nutrition. Um, and so basically I think this morning we're going to be doing chocolate chip oat pancakes with my mix and it's going to be really yummy. So the reason I need kind of a fast grab and go breakfast is because Pretty soon, I think we're going to be leaving to pick up a dollhouse that I found for Sage on Facebook Marketplace, and I'm really excited about that. Um, I also need to go get showered because I just, 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 just look at me. I need a shower. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what's going on right now. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Here's the pancake batter. I used up the last of my pancake mix. This is on the channel. I also have a gluten-free version. I will link both of them down below. I just threw in like a handful of rolled oats because our in, but make sure that you don't upset the ratios. So don't put too much in. You want that flour and baking powder ratio to stay, you know, pretty, pretty close to the original, but it doesn't mean that you can't add anything. It's just just kind of, kind of as an FYI, don't be like half oats and half mix. It, this needs to be treated like an addition, like blueberries or, you know, whatever, chocolate chips or whatever. So yes, like I said, I also threw in <laughs> chocolate chips um, and then date syrup. This is my new favorite sweetener. Um, it seems to make everything more moist and fluffy. So we noticed that with a banana bread recipe. And now we have also noticed it with the pancakes. They come out so fluffy with the date syrup. I'm really sad. I had ordered a gallon of this for my next Azure order and I didn't get it. So now I'm like, what do, what do I do? Like I just discovered this amazingness in my life and now I'm not going to have it. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm well, obviously I'm going to order a gallon for next month, but I might also just throw in quartz. <laughs> it was like, I feel like I have to have more of this in my life now. Um, I've been just using it. Like I have so much of it because I expected to have a gallon coming and that's all I have left. And I don't, I just, anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that because I'm still like, I just found out yesterday I'm not getting my gallon and I'm, I'm just kind of emotional about it. Okay. So <laughs> Uh, this is our standard uh, soy milk that we use. If we are purchasing a milk from a store, this is pretty much the one. Um, and so it is unfortified water, whole organic soybeans. That's it. Um, and this is what we use for a lot of cooking, whatever. If Sage wants to drink it, I let her drink some. Um, it's got some good protein in it um, and whatnot. Obviously, it doesn't have calcium or, you know, that <clears throat> it doesn't have the same nutrition profile as um, dairy milk. But it does have its own wonderful nutrition. And so I, I feel very good about that. Um, I also make a lot of our milks, you know, hemp seed milk, almond milk, cashew milk, um, you know, think of seeds and nuts. And I make pumpkin seed milk, things like that to have, you know, a wide variety of nutritional profiles in our milks. Um, but today I'm just using this cause I don't have any homemade right now. Uh, we also really do enjoy the silk brand, um, it is fortified though, so I'm careful about letting Sage drink too much of it. Um, and so we have the Silk brand, unsweetened organic soy milk in a green carton. And that is another one that we like to buy. The cheapest place that you can find it is Wal at Walmart. Um, where you can find a half gallon of it, I think like usually Sprouts. I don't know if you guys have those stores. This is just my experience. It'll be over $5 for the half gallon of silk at Sprouts. But if you go to Walmart and you find it at Walmart, it will be like $2.79. So it's a huge savings to get it at Walmart instead. So that's my tip. But these are, I think, $1.79. They might have gone up in price. They might be $1.99 now. Uh, but I like to call Trader Joe's and get them to give us um, like two or three cases at a time. So you just call the store and ask if you can buy cases and they will you know, cases will arrive usually in a day or two, and then you can go pick it up. Um, and then that way you're not taking it off the shelf, but also I don't feel like going to the store constantly. We don't have a Trader Joe's very close to us. So that's how I like to do it. Anyway, let me actually get to, ah, I'm going to get to pancakes as soon as I go help Sage in the bathroom. All right, they're ready to flip. I sort of cut them if I have to. 
<laughs> um, I might have let those go a little long. But I do these um, oil free. And then, I mean, I think all of this is in the video. Um, but sometimes I'll add, you know, like almond butter or tahini or something to the mix to get some of those healthy fats in. But um, we, we get them in other ways. Like I mentioned, the, the milks I make, um, but also like in our smoothies, we always are throwing in hemp seeds or chia seeds into our smoothies. There is flax in this and stuff like that. So anyway, we do try for the most part to avoid oils, but sometimes I do occasionally use a little bit. And while I'm waiting for pancakes to cook, I'm just sort of freezing some of these bananas I have here. Um, so <laughs> we do buy our bananas by a 40 pound case, which is not like news to anybody who's watched the channel for any length of time. And so what I like to do is as they start ripening, like I don't necessarily wait for them to be fully super ripe. It's once they get to the edge of no longer being enjoyable to eat for us, which is basically as soon as they start getting kind of soft and overly sweet, that's when they're absolutely perfect for starting to freeze for ice creams or nice creams or smoothies or whatever. But especially if we're going to be making frozen banana and ice cream, that is the stage that you want them at. You can freeze them when they're beyond that. Even when the skins are pretty much totally brown, the banana, you know, at least for a little while will still be white inside. And you can freeze it at that point, but at that point, a lot of times it's kind of gone a little bit past something that's super pleasant to eat by itself when, or, you know, not pleasant, like, like perfect because they become more crystallized. Um, the more ripe they are kind of the more crystallized they are. And I don't, I don't know what, that's the only way I can describe it. It doesn't come out as smooth or creamy and rich when they're like super ripe. So I like to try to start kind of while they are still like eatable but like I said kind of to the edge and so I had a banana this morning and it was at that point and so I was like you know what we're gonna go ahead and start freezing them I just freeze them a little bit at a time um, as I have time in the kitchen so like while I'm over here making pancakes while I'm waiting to flip I'm over here peeling bananas this took maybe two or three minutes and I'll just toss this into the freezer I may do another tray while I'm waiting for another batch of pancakes. Um, and then that's sort of like how I do it. Um, but yeah, we go through bananas really fast. I did have somebody like kind of make an irritated comment at me when they saw my bananas <laughs> in one of the videos. Um, I guess people, they, you know, they think, you know, we're hoarding or whatever, but like we just call the store or we just show up and say, hey, we'd like to buy a case of bananas and they give it to us. It's not like... I don't know. We're not like stealing all of the bananas on earth. I know this looks like a lot of bananas, but even just this morning, my husband put like five bananas into his smoothie. He's the one that eats the most um, because he's the athlete and they really fuel him. Um, he's doing six days a week of training and he does his smoothies and he will blow through these bananas so quickly. Um, I usually do two bananas in a smoothie I share with Sage. The boys do bananas in their smoothies. And so anyway, we just go through a lot of bananas. And so buying them by the case is how I buy them so that I'm not having to constantly go back to the store and get bananas. <laughs> so anyway, yep. But that's kind of what I'm doing. And it's just a little job that I try to do here and there rather than making a big production of just this. I'll do this. When they get too far, only now, wait a second, I need to flip pancakes. I know. Yeah, those bananas, those pancakes got a little bit burny. So... <laughs> I'll eat those. Um, but now I'm trying to remember where I was. Oh yeah. When they get super far, like way too far, even to where I don't even like to really freeze them. I will make banana bread out of them at that point too. Um, but also another thing I really like to do at that point is to turn them into banana leather because the more sugar, like the riper they get, they're developing sugars, right? Here, hold on. Let me turn you around and I'll like watch my pancakes at the same time. Um, the riper they get, the more sugar they develop. So what I'm so like, I have to get a shower. I'm so please. I'm sorry about this. Okay. Um, but anyway, the, um, the riper they get, the more sugar they develop, like I said a million times, sorry. Um, 
But a lot of times when you are dehydrating, things with an extra high sugar content will stay more flexible. They won't ever fully dry. Um, and so when you have bananas that are like super brown and soft, um, making fruit leather out of the bananas is a great option because they will naturally be really flexible without having to add like corn syrup or whatever. Some people add sweeteners to their fruit leathers in order to make them flexible. Or I've seen people add like pectin and gelatin. Of course, we're not adding gelatin, but um, basically for me, all you really have to do, but of course it's, it's just a straight banana leather. You just wait for them to be super ripe. And then what I do to keep them together so that they're not too runny is I add chia seeds and I'm pretty sure I've even shown this in previous videos. I can't tell you which one. If one of you has watched it recently and knows which one it is, then you can tell us in the comments. Um, but I just add a few chia seeds and then when I blend it up, it becomes just, you know, like a little bit goopy because the chia seeds will bind it, pour it in a really thick la layer, and then you dehydrate them on like parchment. And then I just roll them up while they're still warm out of the dehydrator and cut them with scissors into like one inch things. And then those little one inch rolled bundles of banana leather, if that makes sense, <laughs> go into a jar. Um, I also add lemon juice, by the way, just a little bit of lemon juice, but because they're overly ripe and super extra sweet and super extra full of sugar, those leathers are very flexible and wonderful. And that's basically all it is. It's like super overripe bananas, a little bit of lemon juice, a few chia seeds, blend it up, dehydrated, and then you have fruit leathers that are really delicious. It's actually one of Adam's favorite snacks. He gets really excited when I make those. So anyway, I need to flip some pancakes. All right, and I'm about to grab some beans and I haven't shown this yet, but I thought I would show this for anybody who wonders like, how does this work? I don't necessarily carry these into my kitchen. A lot of times I just bring a strainer and then whatever measurement I'm using. So in this case, I'm gonna get two cups of beans. Um, and so my most frequently used beans are and other things too are in the front. So basically, I sort of set the strainer wherever I can and I pull this out, kind of go like that. And do this. Get my cup. And oh, shoot, the strainer was wet. That's not ideal. Um, but I'm just going to do two cups of beans in this instance. I'm grabbing chickpeas because I'm making hummus. And back and then so you don't necessarily have to lift the giant buckets every time um and that's especially helpful for i don't know if you hurt your back or something <laughs> but like if i were say needing to get to the back bucket i would just simply pull this out put it down pull this one forward and then just repeat that process for the one in the back and then do this but typically I bring, you know, my strainer or my container to the buckets rather than carrying the buckets all the way. So I just thought I would show you how I do that. This is another um, kind of staple in my kitchen now. Um, this is an old applesauce, or not applesauce, apple juice uh, jug. And I just try to keep it full pretty much at all times uh, for mainly for cooking. Um, soups, <laughs> beans, grains. Uh, whatever, refilling the kettle, um, whatever, so that our Berkey isn't forced to keep up with all of our drinking water plus whatever water I need for the kitchen because we have probably a Berkey that's a bit too small for our family. It is the quote unquote big, but we should have gotten like the crown, but they didn't have that <laughs> when I bought it. Um, so basically, I just sort of throughout the day or like just now when I filled my instant pot with those chickpeas I just grabbed and I put enough water to cover the chickpea chickpeas with enough water like up to my second knuckle um, and then now those are getting ready to go so it was up to about here and now it's down to here so now I'm coming through and I'm refilling it and then this is just something that I do um, kind of all day throughout the day I will fill this until the Berkey is empty again. And normally I'm picking picking this up and holding it so that it doesn't like overfill like that. Uh, but I'm filming right now, so. Um, <laughs> and I'll just go throughout the day 
and do this, I'm gonna basically just empty this. And then as soon as it's empty, I will refill the top. Um, and then just keep going and get myself back up to here so that I have plenty of water ready now to go ahead and cook dinner later, which is going to be two instant pots. One is gonna be full of beans, one is gonna be full of rice. And so I will always make sure that I have enough water for that. Um, and that is one of the things that I do <laughs> to make absolutely sure that I've always got everything that I need in my kitchen, my vegan kitchen, cooking from dry goods. Um, it requires a lot of the filtered water. And so, yeah, that's just sort of something that I do. Have I ever pointed out that my Berkey stand is a flower pot? I don't know if I've done that before, <laughs> but um, that is what it is. It's Gosh, an old flower pot I had gotten from Goodwill um, long ago, and I realized that it was kind of the perfect size, like our glasses fit under, and then even the um, Vitamix fits if you kind of tilt it first, and then it will sit. So it's pretty much the perfect size, but it's just as a thought, because Berkey stands can be somewhat pricey, and then if you're not super handy and don't want to make your own, you might be able to get away with doing it with a flower pot. <laughs> Here's another random thing. Um, I wasn't planning on making this such a random tips video, but that's kind of what it's becoming. Um, when I use tomato paste now, um, if I only use part of it, I will freeze the rest of the tomato paste in one tablespoon portions uh, because according to the internet anyway, um, one tablespoon of tomato paste is about equivalent to one entire tomato. So I have some recipes that call for, you know, just a couple of tomatoes. And so I will open up a tomato paste if I don't have any tomatoes. Um, and I'll just use like one or two tablespoons. And then what do I do with the rest of it? Well, I used to stick it in my fridge and vow to use it. Um, but pretty much every single time I would forget about it and it would go bad. So now what I do is this, and I'll store it in my freezer in a little container. And honestly, I kind of like for one of these or a container, whatever container I'm using to get relatively full, but you can freeze in glass, obviously, if you want to, if you're using straight sided mason jar glass, like wide mouth pints or wide mouth um, half pints or regular mouth half pints, um, there's just the sides need to be straight and then you should be fine for freezing. Of course, I don't know, now at this point, if you're not freezing this in the container, maybe you would be fine to freeze one of the other styles, but I don't really care. I just have a few of these left over from my spice organization project, and they are my new favorite. I love these things so much. Well, here, just a second. Then I'm opening my freezer. Um. And so, well, these, this fell over, but this is leftovers from yesterday. So Adam can take that. Um, and yeah, it's pretty great. So I love these things. They fit pretty perfectly in my freezer. Um, and so now I have my container with my little bits of tomato paste and I'm not going to waste it. Well, I figured I'd sit and talk to you guys about something that's kind of brand new to me and um, I will let you guys know how it works out. Um, I have mentioned in previous videos that I am not one for meal planning, but I'm realizing that as my goal is to work more and more and more from the dried stores and to not rely on things like canned beans and stuff like that, um, it's becoming kind of stressful and having uh, like to, to get to dinner time and then not have a plan yet. Uh, also, there's just been a lot going on. Uh, days have been so busy that I find myself more and more at night not knowing what I'm doing and not having anything prepared. Um, and it's causing me more stress and more anxiety. So I was like, you know what? It might be time to finally sit and do some meal planning. And I, I just kind of can't believe that I haven't started earlier. Um, it's, I don't know, it's difficult. I can't explain to you. If you have um, like ADHD or any kind of um, neurodivergence, you might, you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. Like, like when you're looking at a new thing, it, somebody say like, it's just so simple, just sit, just do it. But it's like, it, somehow it's not. It, it feels like trying to scale a 20 foot wall, you know, like 
you have to get over this huge roadblock in your mind before you can even start. But then once you start, then it becomes extremely easy. Like once you get the momentum going, you can do it. So anyway, I did finally just decide I've got to sit. Um, I think what has come together though, is that I'm going to be doing this all digitally. Um, it's going to be in Google Calendar. Um, so I'm doing, that's how I'm doing all of my meal planning. And so I was going to kind of show you guys these first two weeks that I have planned. So this is kind of like way, way, way back in the day when I first got married many, 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 many years ago. Um, and it wasn't nearly as complicated. I did meal planning and it was handy, you know, and it was back way before we were vegan. You'd have the little note that was like, uh, get meat out of the freezer to thaw for the next day for the meal. Um, but being vegan, especially it's like, I don't need any of that, you know, like, like we're basically good to go whenever. Um, but again, trying really hard to get back into doing everything more homemade, um, from scratch, um, to save money, uh, not only for saving money, obviously saving money is great, uh, but to utilize what we already have, um, and make sure that we're getting through everything quickly, um, as we're stocking and rotating. Um, so for instance, I'm not going to go to the store and buy hummus this time. I'm making it and I'm making it today and I'll, I'll show you guys on the, the meal plan. Uh, so to sort of plan ahead for things. Uh, and so instead of getting meat from the freezer for the next day's meal, like today I'm making hummus because I need it for tomorrow because we're making lasagna. And I, I have a recipe for that on the channel, actually. My uh, vegan lasagna, it's got a, a tofu ricotta that uses hummus um, as part of it. So um, it's really good. So I can link that down below too. But so things like that. So uh, also too, like I said, because I'm working with dried beans to make my beans the day before I need them. And so let me just sort of show you kind of what I, what I have so far. Um, and... I don't know, it's probably gonna change as we go forward, but it's kind of amazing. I already feel less stressed. Um, so let me show you, and I'm just making sure. Okay, yes, all of my personal calendars are hidden. So all you're seeing are the meal planning and the tasks attached. But normally the calendar is much more full than this, but I don't really wanna broadcast my schedule to people. So <laughs> I'm not gonna show you guys that stuff. Okay, so here we go. I did basically what a lot of things suggest, and that is to pick themes for each day. So because Monday tends to be a really busy day, um, I run around, I get stuff done. This is typically my errand day, and I might not be home getting everything ready. So I need an easy, really fast meal for Mondays. And so Monday is my um, dump and go instant pot meal day. Um, and so I do have Chana Doll actually on the channel. I guess I can link that down below too. <laughs> that is a good instant pot recipe. Um, and so that's what we're going to do for dinner tonight. Um, but tomorrow is, and also the, the good thing about this um, that I realized kind of only after the fact is that I don't need, like these are meals where I can just go without doing any kind of prep. So I don't have to have a reminder on Sunday to get something ready for this day because they're just like super easy grab and go dump Instant Pot things that I, you know, I don't have to plan on making something in advance so that I can just be free on Sunday. And I don't have anything written Sunday because we tend to do um, leftovers. We might go out to eat after church. Um, and so we sort of just sort of leave it really low key on Sundays anyway. So like last night was Sunday and we just sort of had simple dinner. Like everybody sort of just did their own thing. Like Adam had toast and spaghetti sauce, which doesn't sound like an amazing thing, but it's incredible. It's my homemade sourdough in our homemade sauce full of flax. And it had TVP in there. Um, I made myself little bread pizzas. I did just like toast with spaghetti sauce and um, vegan cheese on top. Here, I realized I'm talking, so I should be looking at you. Uh, the boys each just made themselves ramen. So they got um, noodles and they, they got ramen and they put tofu in. And then we have fruit and smoothies and stuff. And just sort of like very low key, very easy. Nobody feels like working really hard on Sunday, least of all me. We try to make it kind of like a day of rest. Breakfasts are very simple. Toasts, oatmeal, um, granola, um, 
like breakfast bars if I if I make like little breakfast bars and things so like banana bread like if we have stuff on hand we just sort of have very low-key breakfast but for the most part it's it's smoothies honestly um but also yeah like and then lunches are leftovers and things so we're very low-key so I'm not planning breakfasts and lunches because pretty much every single day lunch is leftovers and then breakfast is yeah oatmeal smoothies things like that so this is primarily about dinner. <laughs> but um, so yeah, we have very low key Sunday and so I don't have to worry or make anything for the week. So that's another bonus that I didn't realize and so that just works out so perfectly. So Monday is the dump and go instant pot. So I have that and then next week, I, so I've planned two weeks total. Next week is this barley lentil soup recipe that I absolutely adore. It is based off of somebody else's recipe and I can link that down below as well. Um, it's a delicious recipe, seriously, so good and so easy. Um, and so I really love it, but I'm adapting it for using my dehydrated stuff. So I'm using my, um, my dehydrated celery and peppers and carrots and things in it. And so once I get that perfected, I am going to um, put that as a recipe or as a video on the channel as well. But yeah, it, it's really good. <laughs> so anyway, um, tomorrow obviously is lasagna. So Tuesday I have decided is baked pasta day. Um, so we love baked pastas, whether it's lasagna or just pasta or like a mac and cheese type thing or whatever. And so I have decided that that's what we're doing on Tuesdays. And then just two weeks in a row, we're just gonna have lasagna because we really love lasagna. Um, and so lasagna and a salad. And then here's like lasagna roasted broccoli. Um, and so the hummus today, I'm going to make a big batch of hummus to make my lasagna. Cause it makes, it's with the tofu ricotta that uses hummus. Um, that's on the channel. I'll link it down below. And so like next week I have get hummus from the freezer because I'm going to make enough hummus today for this week's and next week's lasagna. Um, and then Wednesday we're going to be having super soup with rolls. This is also on the channel. So I'm going to, uh, get tempeh from the freezer, um, tomorrow and then make the spice mix for the soup because the part that really takes the longest making the soup is actually getting the spices together. Um, and so actually, well, let me, I'm going to not distract myself and I will continue. So I have decided Wednesday is soup day. We love soup in our house. And so we're just going to have soup. So we're actually, we're having soup on Monday over here and then we're going to have soup again. So it's not like we can only have soup one day a week, but just to help me narrow some of my choices, we'll have soup on um, Wednesdays. And so um, Thursdays, I have decided, is our Mexican and Indian. And so primarily Mexican and Indian food, because that's mainly what we eat like as far as international food. But Thursday, I've decided, is like our international food day. And so if I feel like having um, Chinese food or, or whatever, you know, just nations that are not my own nation will be eating foods kind of similar to that. Although I know technically chili and cornbread is not really so much a Mexican thing. That's like a Texan thing. It's a Texican thing. Um, <laughs> so um, we are going to have chili and cornbread. Um, but it's got, you know, the chilies, like Mexican flavors. Um, and so I'm going to still put it on there. Uh, but then the day before, I'm going to make my black beans. And I'm going to make sure I have some cornbread mix ready to go. Uh, multiples because next week we're going to be doing black bean green chili soup and cornbread so I'll make sure I have enough cornbread mixes to do both of these meals and then Fridays I have decided let's just do pizza pizza is easy <laughs> so um, I have a new pizza dough recipe that I'm going to be trying out so both Thursdays I'll make a batch of pizza dough to stick into the fridge and then we'll have pizza dough ready to go for Fridays and so we just primarily do uh, things like pickled jalapenos and um, pineapple and veggies. I also really love uh, tempeh. Oh, I should, I need to add that, get tempeh from the freezer because one of our favorite things to put on pizza is um, tempeh that I marinate in like equal parts, coconut aminos and balsamic vinegar. Um, and you put that together and you stick your sliced up, slice your tempeh up into like little little squares, like, I don't know, like maybe three quarter inch, inch squares. Um, cause the tempeh is flat. So when you take small slices of the tempeh and then just cut it into squares, um, then take those and marinate those. And then those become our pizza topping. We pull them out of the marinade and just put them right on top of the pizza. And then that becomes like what we have on pizza, like instead of pepperoni or whatever. 
and it's delicious. We love it. Um, and it goes with all kinds of things. So I am trying to decide now as far as the timing of it, whether or not I'm going to buy a little bit more vegan cheese or make some, but we also often just frequently don't even put cheese, but there's a few recipes in here. I got this from my library and it looks very promising. I can't recommend it yet because I haven't tried the recipes, but there's a few recipes in here that look really promising and I'm going to try those out. Um, especially some that don't require culturing, even though I love cultured vegan cheese and I have made it before, I might just not really have time. So I might need to add some new tasks in here once I figure out exactly what I'm doing. Um, okay. And then just for simple stuff, um, Saturday is not so much, um, I don't know what the theme of Saturday is for me right now. The theme in my head is making something with a recipe that uses up something that we haven't used a lot of lately. And so for me, it's gotta be lentils. Uh, so like right here, this barley lentil soup is with red lentils. We use a ton of red lentils, but I'm needing to use up our green lentils. They're you know just kind of getting to where I should be using those up. And so for the next two Saturdays, I am going to have um, lentil recipes, recipes that will hopefully use up a lot of lentils. And so we're gonna do my lentil loaf on Saturday. Um, and then the following Saturday we'll do lentil balls. Um, and so I kind of already talked about next week. Um, this is not on the channel enchiladas. Oh yeah. So with enchiladas, I'll make the enchilada sauce in advance. Um, we haven't done pinto beans in a while, so I'm going to use pinto beans in the enchiladas. Um, and just, yeah. So trying to not only make this easier on myself as far as meal planning goes, um, to reduce stress, but also having it written down it's taking care of another kind of point of stress in my head that like realizing I have things that we haven't been utilizing as, as much as we should pretty soon. I'm going to be simplifying these buckets. So I'm not going to purchase any more buckets. I think we're good. We have 12 buckets, but it is highly likely that certain things, once I use them up, we will not be getting those things again. Um, highly likely. Uh, so I'm thinking the cannellini beans. So gosh, I haven't even done cannellini beans. I might switch a bean out here and use cannellini beans instead. Um, and the lentils, just like the plain brown lentils, we just don't use them very often at all. It's just not, it's not my personal favorite bean. I mean, it makes a good soup, but I don't know. It's not like unique enough in itself. Like we use a lot of red lentils, uh, but the brown or green lentils, we just don't use. Um, we use mung beans though. I love mung beans. So I haven't used any mung beans, but we had, we have had mung beans like six times in the last two weeks. I keep making things with mung beans. We just like them. They cook in roughly the same amount of time as the lentils. Um, and so yeah, it's, it's just something like, so probably once I get through that bucket of lentils, I'm just going to not use those lentils anymore. I'm going to put something else in that bucket. Um, probably my, uh, whole wheat. I will start a bucket that I'm going to be dipping from for grinding our own flowers. Um, trying to get into more and more of that stuff. So yeah, moving forward, meal planning. And I don't know how helpful any of that was. It took over 10 minutes. It might be super boring, but that's kind of what's going on. That's what's on my head, on my, on my head in my head, on my mind right now. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing. So if you're wondering what are, what are the vegan preppers eating? Um, likely, you know, it's something to do with those themes and I will probably, you know, this is just kind of what I managed to get done quickly this morning before I started going everywhere. Um, but I will be planning out probably at least a month at a time. Um, and it's just so handy that was another thing I didn't expect. So like, for instance, like with the mixes, like the cornbread mixes and like, okay, I'll make sure I make at least two cornbread mixes because I have one coming up next week. Um, and it takes like virtually no time to make mixes. So to be able to look ahead and then plan my convenience jars based on what I'm going to actually make. And then I won't have to just like kind of have it be a shot in the dark, make like five, jars for my spaghetti sauce if I'm not even going to use that. But like I've got two, I've got lasagna, lasagna, two things of pizza. So that's four. 
I'm gonna need four double batches of sauce um, just right there. And then the linguine and lentil balls will likely also be another like spaghetti sauce. So I'll need five convenience jars of my pasta sauce, um, which I brought up in my convenience jars video. And I can link that down below too. I'm making a huge list of things I need to link for you guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so I'm gonna plan on sitting and making my mixes and I don't know, I'm tentatively excited about this. Once I got over that, you know, that, that 20 foot wall, um, I don't know, I'm happy. So hopefully this works out. I'm, I'm very hopeful that this is going to work out pretty well. I'm, I'm weirdly, I am weirdly extremely organized. I know I come across as very flighty um, and kind of like, bleh, and I, I kind of am, I'm that too, but like, once I get stuff, like I can really put stuff into like lines and get everything really organized. Um, but I think that because my, I'm so ridiculously visual and, um, like spatial in my giftedness, like when it comes to, um, giftedness, sorry, I, I hope that that doesn't sound like some, but you know what? We got to take it where we can get it. Okay. Cause like I mentioned like ADHD and like neurodiversity and neurodivergence, like I, there are ways that I feel like I do have a certain giftedness in, in my abilities, but then pretty much every other way I feel like an idiot, like all the time. If I can be totally honest with you, I feel, I almost never stop feeling stupid because it's like, if you can imagine on one hand, you have a superpower of some kind, but then on the other, like directly on the other side, I don't want to say that like a disability, like it's not the same because I'm not trying to say like I have a disability. I'm not saying that at all, but like, just, like say like I can breathe underwater, right? But then like I can't tie my shoes or like climb stairs. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? like, like, like in some ways I feel like. I can do things that are really special, but then there's like a million kind of super simple things that I just seem kind of incapable of doing. Um, and then for the record, I, I, I can actually tie my own shoes and climb stairs. That was like a metaphor for my brain, if that makes sense. Anyway, I don't know if anybody else can relate. If you understand what I'm talking about, like if you are kind of ADHD, you, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway. I am, like I said, weirdly organized, but it's that, 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 like I said, that 20 foot wall, like having to climb that hurdle before you can start is, it's really difficult, but working on it and always Mom. attempting to Mom. get better and better. Hi. Um, what? You okay. Have, you have oh, she wants pretzels. You want some pretzels? Yeah. Just a few. Oh, just a few. Okay. All right. I'll get you some pretzels. All right. Oh yeah, this has been a long segment. I need to go see her and see what's going on. Okay, it's the next day. I am making a wholesale order now, a wholesale order produce, um, wholesale produce order now. Um, and oh, there's a lizard on my fence. I I love having my window right in my garden. Ah, there you went again. I'm like, oh, please be safe. Anyway, um. I am ordering wholesale produce, um, and so I'm going to just basically get a 50 pound box of potatoes, uh, Yukon Gold A grade potatoes, which is nice, but they're still conventional. Uh, it's $23. Last time I checked, it was only 15, so I missed out on that deal. Um, it was just a few days ago, so the, the prices fluctuate quite a lot, but the thing that I'm like, I'm wondering if this is going to be like one of those times that I accidentally bought 50 pounds of red onions because it was only $11 and I thought surely they're not going to give me 50 pounds for $11. But they have red cabbage. And it's funny because green cabbage is 22, bok choy is 32, napa cabbage is 30, and then red cabbage is listed as 450. And I was like, what is that? I called and I was like, what's that quantity? Is that like each? And he goes, no, it's a box. I'm pretty sure it's 50 pounds. And I was like, is there a catch? Like, is there something wrong with it? Like, is it going bad or, or what? And he's like, no, I think we just got so much. We're just trying to get rid of it. So I might be getting 50 pounds of red cabbage for 450. I might accidentally be buying 50 pounds of red cabbage right now. 
and having to think of what on earth I'm going to do with it. Um, but the good news is cabbage lasts a really long time. At least it usually does, right? If you guys remember the onion fiasco, that didn't work out very well. Um, but not the first onion fiasco, not the first onion thing where I accidentally bought 50 pounds. That was fine. I worked through that. It took me like a month and a half to get through all of those onions and I got through them all fine. I didn't have to throw a single one away. Um, but the last time I bought a 50 pound bag of onions, um, within two weeks, they basically rotted on my floor. Um, and I hadn't looked at them. I hadn't gotten into them, uh, because I expected to have more time, uh, and I didn't. So I let basically a huge bag of onions rot on my floor and it was really depressing. Um, but that was, I think one of like either the last day in the life or one of the other days in the life videos. So now I'm wondering about these red cabbages, but I'm going to give it a shot and they last anywhere from a month to two months in the fridge. So anyway, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Long story short, I just accidentally bought 45 pounds of cabbage. So yeah, I'm going to be dealing with that for the next day or two. Huh. Anyway, I guess that's it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just end it there because I honestly can't think of a better ending point. And thank you for sticking with me for this long. Um, as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Bye. In my defense, it was $4.50. $4.50. How much cabbage do you think you're going to get for $4.50? Apparently, 45 pounds of it. So that means it was 10 cents a pound. Oh my gosh. Well, now that I think about it, the math makes sense. Okay. Bye. I might need to deal with these caterpillars on my face at some point today. Shave the mustache.